Hello and welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your weekly dose of all things badminton. Coming up, we speak to Matthias Bo about calling time on his incredible 20-year career. I'm not not young anymore, at least not in the world of badminton. So uh, obviously, uh, the, the, these these thoughts have been in my mind for uh, for quite a while. Plus, the Dane reveals to us his top five moments on the court. And we find out how Air Badminton is being received around the world a year after it was launched. The interesting thing at the moment is that many countries are signaling that they can get back to national activities before they'll be doing anything internationally. Obviously, travel is going to be a problem. As everybody else, I'm uh, yeah, affected about this. Uh, Bad, uh, pandemic that has has striked the world so uh, obviously it's not nice but um, yeah I'm trying to make the most out of the situation trying to keep myself busy indoor uh, and then uh, just uh, yeah uh, once a day or something then go out and get some fresh air but uh, yeah it, it's it's getting a little bit uh, boring now but uh, I guess it's necessary to, to do this. I'm not not young anymore, at least not in the world of badminton. So uh, obviously, uh, the, these these thoughts have been in my mind for uh, for quite a while. Um, at least uh, maybe the last two years or so. Uh, not not every day, obviously, but but once in a while it comes to your mind. Right now, I'm I'm actually relieved. Uh, it is the one word I would put. Um, yeah, as I said before, uh, I don't have to deal with the pressure anymore. I don't have to to push myself each and every day to to become best and and also uh, not being so frustrated because uh, yeah, let's face it. Uh, I, I still see myself also in the end here as, as a really good badminton player, but uh, I wasn't the best as, uh, as I was maybe uh, some years earlier, or at least to been in my career. My friends and family, they have uh, like celebrated my, uh, my career and, and sent nice messages also from, from the fans and, and colleagues around the world. Uh, have sent a lot of like happy retirement wishes uh, my way, and um, obviously I'm, I'm excited about that. I mean, it's it's a part of it. Uh, you know, when you start playing professionally, that that it's uh, it's only for a limited uh, time period. So uh, so my time is up, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'm I'm pretty happy about it actually. Just after we got dumped for the 2008 Olympics, uh, Carsten and I. Uh, we were, of course, really, uh, really wounded uh, mentally, uh, being not selected for the Danish team. Uh, but then, sh relatively short after, we, we traveled to uh, Taipei and, and won Taipei Open, uh, beating uh, Tony Gunavan and uh, Chandra Vijay in the final, which was uh, quite an upset. Um, and, and the year after, we won our first Super Series title in, in Korea, where we beat uh, Jung Jae Sung and Leung Dae on home soil, uh, which uh, I think nobody expected uh, that, not even ourselves. 2010, we, uh, we won Denmark and French, um, two Super Series tournaments back to back. And, um, but actually, when, when you tried that and you know how mentally hard it is to play one week and then continue the next week and have like, you can only like, you can uh, you can only disappoint uh, unless you win again. And then uh, so actually winning back to back tournaments, it's some of the diffi most difficult thing you can do as an athlete. And after French and Denmark, we became world number one. Um, then from there, All England, first uh, first All England title. There is a lot of things, yeah, as I said, the Olympics the year after. <laughs> So um, yeah, I could I could go on. Thank, thankfully, yeah. Definitely the winning feeling, <laughs> the winning moment uh, when when you look back at at some of all, watch it on YouTube once in a while, uh, see some of your greatest victories, and and think about oh, uh, how did I feel during that week, and all these things. That high it gives you. It, it I don't think you can compare it with anything. And it's like sometimes when you sit on the flight back from Asia or something, if you won, you just feel like I think I, if this 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 uh, plane crashes, I don't I think I would be the only one surviving. Like that's actually how the kind of feeling that you have. So, of course, that feeling, um, yeah, is, is something that I've missed. I have a, a bit of small projects uh, going on. Uh, I, first and foremost, I would try and stay, stay in, uh, in shape and, uh, and not uh, gain too many KTs. Uh, so, so I will still uh, like to try and, and, and take care of my body. Um, I, uh, I'm 
into a little bit of real estate. I invested in real estate uh, uh, different places in the world, so I will look more into that. A massive thank you to, to all my fans out there in the world. It's, it's always a pleasure hearing from you and, and seeing you. Uh, and I, I promise you, uh, I will not show up to every tournament, but I would definitely come back to, to a tournament, maybe if, even for work, but uh, at least not for my own pleasure and, and still watch uh, the tournaments live. So I'll probably come to, to a tournament near you in, uh, in the future. Eleven uh, All England was uh, was uh, a, a very very crazy moment for us. Year before uh, we we had four match points in the final against uh, last. Uh, as Puska and Jonas Rasmussen, and uh, and to miss out on that chance, it was like yeah, very very crazy. Yeah, with that history of, of the defeat the year before, and then trailing badly in the third game, and then coming back and uh, and did a, a crazy comeback. It was just like uh, yeah, all joy. Super Series Finals. Um, yeah, it's it's also that, that we have won it three times in a row is a special, and, and especially this the second one where it was such a close encounter in the first uh, first set, saving uh, a lot of uh, a lot of game points. It's actually one of these matches where you can enjoy it because you probably you you know the outcome when you're leading 16-7 or so. So you can just like loosen up in your shoulders, like run around to see it go relatively easy, especially in the second game. It's uh, it's always nice. Super Series Finals title. Survived six game points in the opening game. Winning the second All England title, um, I mean, uh, there's a lot of uh, love from former former famous athletes that said like uh, anybody can do it once, uh, only the really good ones can do it twice. Um, so, uh, so at that time, uh, I mean, we, uh, we 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 played we played really well that season. Have so many close encounters against uh, Foy Fung. So obviously that one we we uh, we drew uh, blood there. Yeah, being able to win there is just fantastic. Matthias Bowe and Carson Morrison win their second All England title four years after they took their first. The French Open in 16 was quite a comeback. Um, just just spending the the title and then, like completed the comeback with going from. Uh, from from brain surgery and uh, not knowing if, if we were ever able to to enter the court again and then claiming a super serious title it was also to show the the kind of personality that that Carson has and how eager he was just to get back uh, on court and uh, and fight it out um, so of course it's it's also an, an experience that that, uh, that tires even more together maybe I would say that that is that is one of the biggest achievements that, that we have done together. Yes, 
desperation defense. I think he's actually hurt his knee. No, can't continue. No, that's it. Oh, what a tragic way for this men's doubles to end. But a third French Open title for the Danes. Seventeen was definitely uh, special because in Singapore, I think we beat the uh, one, two, three, and the world ranking. I think it was uh, Sonoda and Kamuda in, um, in the, the quarterfinal, and Kevin and Marcus in the semifinal, and then Liu and, and Lou in the final. Short after there, we, we also was back at number one in the world ranking. They've done it. Twelve years after their first final here in Singapore, Matthias Bo and Pastor Morganson lift the Singapore Open title. Time for a quick break here on Badminton Unlimited. When we come back, we look at the year that has passed since the launch of Air Badminton. We've been able to refine the rules and look at what's attractive, what works and what doesn't. So it's been, you know, step by step, but we're really getting something that's interesting. And we go back in time for an epic Thomas Cup encounter. On the 13th of May 2019, BWF and its global development partner HSBC launched Air Badminton, an ambitious program to take the sport outdoors and provide opportunities for everyone to play on three surfaces, hard, grass and sand. A year on, BWF's development director, Ian Wright, tells us how the program has been received around the world. I mean, it's been a really interesting year. Obviously, it's a brand new project and there's been a lot of learning for us uh, rolling it out and trying to get the implementation plans right. Um, we had a great launch. We had a great start to it in Guangzhou and then followed up with our uh, AGM as well. Uh, we've created a lot of interest and now slowly all the other pieces have fallen into place. So um, we're very excited by the program. The two launches um, in Guangzhou, that was great with HSBC, followed up by the launch at the AGM with all of our members. They were great, great moments, I have to say. But then also we've been able to put in place a number of pilot projects and events um, where we've been able to test the, the interest in the participation end of it. So we, did, uh, we were involved in a city tour in the Netherlands, which was really interesting. We got good feedback from that. We've been involved in a couple of uh, competitions where we've been able to play competitions on the sand surface in uh, Finland and uh, Dubai. So we've been able to refine the rules and look at what's attractive, what works and what doesn't. So it's been, you know, step by step, but we're really getting something that's interesting. Feedback's been really positive, I have to say. Um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, a lot, most of it's constructive. Um, but the, probably the most interesting thing is we did a survey with our members. We sent a survey out to the members on interest levels of um, Air Badminton. 93 countries came back and said that they wanted samples and they wanted equipment so that they could run pilots to test it. That's really interesting. So um, we're in the process of shipping out all of that equipment to those countries so that they can uh, run their own projects and test it out themselves. 
So interest is high. And the other thing with that is it's not just, we expected it to be from the smaller countries where facilities was a real issue, but also quite a number of our big members have expressed a real uh, high interest in, in, the, um, in the project. So we've got a real mix of members that are going to run projects for us. Obviously, circumstances allowing. We've been, with the current situation with COVID-19 globally, um, we've, we've obviously been set back. The interesting thing at the moment is that many countries are signaling that they can get back to national activities before they'll be doing anything internationally. Obviously, travel's going to be a problem. And indoor sports are still blocked in most countries that are even the ones that are open up nationally. So a lot of them are saying this is a real opportunity for them to get people outside and trying the sport. So we're working hard to get shuttles and equipment where it's needed to these countries so that they can actually get people playing air badminton and give people something different to try coming out of isolation. Um, something that's fun, it's positive, it still gives you a physical hit, but also mentally it's good because you're mixing with friends to do it in an open air environment. So in some circumstances, um, we'll probably be starting with air badminton before we'll be starting badminton again in many countries. I mean, the good news is that Guangzhou's now open up again. Uh, so uh, public are allowed out. Uh, there's just, obviously, there's some controls with that, with social distancing, etc. But what it has allowed us to do is go to the next phase of implementation for the permanent courts. So uh, we've got some more courts that have been put down in Guangzhou. Uh, we're still working very closely with uh, Guangzhou Sports Bureau on the project. And uh, the feedback we're getting, obviously we can't visit at the moment, but the feedback we're getting is that people are out there playing. Uh, there's a good supply of the shuttles now in Guangzhou, which is great. That was obviously a problem during the shutdown as well. So things are opening up well and uh, we're seeing a lot more, in, a lot of interest in it. And again, where indoor facilities are a little bit uh, restricted, outdoor is a really good option and we're getting a lot of people out there playing. So that's really good news. We've got a manufacturer that we identified a while back and they've helped us further develop the shuttle actually. So in the last year we've also been able to improve the performance of the air shuttle, which is great. That's been a really interesting process as well. Um, but uh, Vic Victor came on board, which is great, but we've also got a number of other um, brands that have come on board now. And it's really important to us to get as many brands on board as we possibly can, uh, because we really need global availability of this shuttle. We're not giving any exclusivity to any brands in any regions because we really need uh, the shuttle to be really accessible, affordable and you know, available at a really micro level in different countries in different situations. So it was great Victor coming on board because they're a great, you know, they're a great partner for badminton but there are other brands coming on board as well all the time and uh, we're really hopeful that all of our partners eventually will come on board and help us with this project. The month of May is traditionally saved for major events in the badminton calendar. This year it would have witnessed the Thomas and Uber Cups, which have now been postponed to October. So, our classic match this week pays homage to this fan favourite tournament by going back to 1992, the last time Malaysia lifted the Thomas Cup. In the epic final against Indonesia, it was their men's doubles pair of Chia Sun Kit and Su Ben Kiang who delivered the winning blow against Ricky Subagja and Rexy Meineke in front of a vociferous home crowd. And having got their noses in front again, you can expect every Malaysian point to be cheered to the echo. One pair have got a lot of experience, they're expected to win, their country's in the lead at the moment. The other pair, more inexperienced, but if they lose this one, they've lost. Oh, so fast and furious. Cross 
caught catching out the Indonesians. We'll see it. Back goes Ricky. Straight push. And across it comes from the left-hander, Subeng Kiang. And now Raksi Mainaki. He's rather more deliberate. No. Che Soon Kit. Hard to believe how they could win that one. Yes, they were certainly helped by a net cord. Game point again. This time it works. Five one. Good start to the second game. That's more like it from the Malaysians. Got on top of the net so well. Once he was there, he was never going to let it go. Well, what the Malaysians can do, Ricky Subagja can do as well. Yes, what lovely touch. Defensive play, change direction of the shuttle. Ricky Subagja gets ready and serves. Flick serve, it's an ace. So, 15-10 to Ricky Subagja and Rexy Meineke. For an easy kill. The push from the Indonesians goes out. That takes the young Malaysians to within three points. That's all they need. And now they only need two. Second server. 8-13. Good doubles, great smash, match point. And Jia Sun Kit to serve. And they've done it! now to look at what some of your favourite players have been up to on social media.
that's all the time we have on today's show. Join us next week as the candid and humorous Chinese Taipei duo Yang Po Han and Lu Qingyao show us the fun and crazy thing they get up to on their travels. <laughs> And we get on a video call with Indonesia men's single star Anthony Sinisuka Ginting. In the meantime, remember to log on to bwfbadminton.com for the latest news and features on the sport. Bye bye and stay safe.